Hello, everybody. Welcome to this presentation. Today, I will be giving a talk about our recent chat paper. Pay attention to raw traces: a deep learning architecture for end-to-end -end profiling attacks. Let's start with the basic motivation of this work. Deep learning has been widely used in the side channel analysis in recent years. Many works defeat the countermeasures like masking and address the desynchronization issue simultaneously by deep learning. The neural network has shown its ability in the set channel context. In almost all of these papers, the selected narrow trace intervals instead of the raw traces are used, even when the implementation is protected by masking countermeasure. That means there is a manual feature extraction before the profiling. In our opinion, these previous works do the research with an implicit assumption that the number of time samples in raw traces can be reduced before the profiling easily. However, if we consider a practical black box analysis on a masked implementation, locating the leakages is arguably the most challenging part of the whole analysis. The assumption may be too strong or even invalid in a practical analysis targeting a masked implementation. Therefore, we argue that to fully utilize the potential of deep learning and get rid of any manual intervention, we need the end-to-end -end profiling that directly maps raw traces to target intermediate values. So, in our paper, we propose an end-to-end -end architecture composed of encoders, attention mechanisms, and a classifier to conduct the end-to-end -end profiling. And here we have four main contributions in this work. The first is an architecture for practical end-to-end -end profiling, so we could directly profile raw traces. The second is that to build the end-to-end -end architecture, we introduce some new structures into the SAA. Third, we get satisfying results on public data sets with our architecture. And fourth, we explore the tension mechanism in the SAA context, which further explains why our end-to-end -end architecture works. Here is our new architecture. We propose this architecture to conduct the end-to-end -end profiling, no matter the raw traces are desynchronized or protected by the masking countermeasures. And we could see how these three companies work from the viewpoint of SAA in this picture. Roughly speaking, the encoders will first encode raw traces to the abstract features. Then the attention mechanism will give each feature a score and weighted sum them up. Finally, the classifier generates the probability from the final feature vector. I will give a more detailed introduction of our end-to-end -end architecture in the next. First is the encoder component. The encoder component includes two parts, the junior encoder and the senior encoder. Here we start from the junior encoder first. For the junior encoder, we also have two kinds of structure to handle the synchronized and desynchronized scenarios. For the synchronized scenario, we use the locally connected layer. This layer is quite similar to the convolutional layer, except it does not share the filter width among the steps when it slides along the traces. We could see how it works in the right-hand figure. We choose this layer because the locally connected layer decouples each neuron from the whole high-dimensional input, which is crucial to generate fine-grade features with high quality, as we observed. For the desynchronized scenario, we still use the stacked convolutional layers and polling layers. We use them to extract shift-invariant features to address the desynchronization. But we avoid the fully connections and very deep convolutional structure by other upper components like senior encoder and attention. Then is the senior encoder. For the senior encoder, we use the long short term memory. So why do we choose LSTM as the senior encoder? First, LSTM could learn to control the data flow automatically when it goes through the sequential data. There are three gates in LSTM, and these gates will control what information is collected, forgot, and yielded. 
Second, there is a built-in structure in LSTM called memory seal for storing the combined features. Compared to some other gated recurrent layers without the built-in memory, like GRU, we find that the built-in memory makes the feature combination more stable. Third, LSTM could theoretically handle infinite long sequences. The LSTM in our architecture works under the sequence to sequence mode. The reason of using this mode is that encoding a too long sequence into a single feature vector is still too hard. The LSTM still faces a great issue in practice. As a result, we need some mechanism to reduce the hardness of training. Ideally, if we can choose some critical time steps, or at least shorten the time sequence automatically, the training will be much easier. Therefore, we select the sequence to sequence mode, which it poses the hiding state at each time step to satisfy the necessary precondition. Our senior encoder consists of two LSTM layers with different directions, one forward and one backward. Since one of the LSTM reads the input backward, the order of accessing the sensitive leakages is reversed from the forward one. These two LSTMs may learn different kinds of combinations of features. And there are also two ways to utilize the output sequence of these two LSTM layers. We could concatenate them along the feature axis, like the figure on the left side, or keep them independent, like the figure on the right side. If we don't want the outputs of LSTMs to interact with each other through the merging operation, nor limit the representing flexibility of higher layers, we could just keep them independent. And the independent LSTMs give better explanation of how our architecture locates the informative intervals. We will give more evidence when we realize the attention mechanisms later. Next is the attention mechanism. The attention mechanism evaluates each feature vector H from the senior encoder and gives each of them a score. The primary motivation of using attention is to reduce the valid length of a sequence, so it is unnecessary for LSTM to encode the whole feature sequence to a single feature vector. The attention mechanism selects some important time steps and it essentially departs the sequence by the probabilities where the value is large enough. As a result, in ideal conditions, the LSTM could only remember the information in a shortened interval, that is, remember the information before a distinct attention peak. This naturally solves the gradient issue in practice. For the detailed implementation, we modify the attention mechanism proposed by Bodno by inserting a batch normalization layer after calculating the raw scores. Then the raw scores are still normalized by the softmax function. Finally, we conduct a weighted sum according to the normalized scores, also known as the attention probability. We just skip the introduction of our classifier component, component as it is just a simple fully connected layer. If we jump out of the implementation details, there are two variants of our architecture. These two variants are related to how our two LSTMs are concatenated. For the case that the LSTMs are connected along the feature axis, we use only one attention instance, as the figure variant 1. For the case that the two LSTMs are independent, we append an attention instance on each LSTM like the figure variant 2. In variant 2, the attention components are also directional. We find that the variant 2 could handle more complicated leaking scenarios. For example, the sensitive leakages are far from each other or spread in multiple clock cycles. But variant 1 is more efficient in training when the leaking scenario is simple. So what do we get through our new architecture? Let me start from some basic settings of our experiments. First, we consider the identity label. That means we have 256 labels, and typically we use the output of AES box. 
and we also consider both synchronized and desynchronized cases. Below are the datasets we use in our experiments. Four of them are public, two from DPA contest and the rest two from SCAD. These four datasets are protected by Boolean mask. We also acquire 80.128 datasets from an 80 mega 128 MCU, on which we simulate a masking countermeasure. The 80128-F means the leakages of mask and masked value are far from each other, so it is a harder tree set compared to the 80128-N uh, when, when we consider the end-to-end -end profiling. You can see from the third column that we could use over 400,000 time samples directly in profiling. Uh, we also want to clarify that we use SCAD v2 to refer to the dataset collected on 80 mega 8515 with variable key. The holders released a new tree set collected on ARM STM32 after the submission of our paper and also name it SCAD v2. So don't confuse these two datasets. First, we apply our network to synchronize traces. Here are the results of the dataset DP contest v4.1. The first, second, and third column are the validation accuracy, validation loss, and the guessing entropy, respectively. In the first row, we do not use the knowledge of mask. We reach the guessing entropy zero in four or five traces. And in the second row, we suppose the value of mask is known. We need only one trace to recover the key. Then we test the dataset DP contest v4.2. In this dataset, there are 16 subsets, each corresponding to a different key. We use the traces from all of the 16 subsets to train our attack. In the getting entropy figure, we could see that most subsets could be successfully attacked in 10 traces. The subset 12 is harder to attack and it needs about 120 traces. Next, we consider the SCAD dataset. From the figures of SCAD v1, we find that our network could reduce the getting entropy to zero very efficiently. It costs about 6 traces to recover the key. To our best knowledge, this result is state-of-the-art even compared to the results based on the selected POIs. From the figures of SCAD v2, we see that the attack is also pretty efficient. We use about 10 traces to recover the correct key. To our best knowledge, this is also a state-of-the-art attacking result on this dataset, even, even we use the raw traces. We give detailed explanations about the loss and the accuracy curve in our paper, so I will not dive into them in this presentation. Next, we come to the 8128 dataset. We use both of the variants on these two datasets to explore how to use architecture according to the different leaking scenarios. In 8128-N, the leakages are limited in a narrow interval on the row traces, while in 8128-F, the leakages are far from each other. Besides the efficient attack, the guessing entropy indicates that the network based on variant 2 handles both leaking conditions better in terms of profiling quality. The advantage of variant 1 is that it could converge with a larger batch size when the number of training traces is the same and thus get a good network for attack faster. We also give a more detailed discussion in our paper about how to choose these two variants. So what will happen when we consider the desynchronized traces? Well, in desynchronized cases, we use stacked convolutional layers to replace the locally connected layer. The delay interval in figures mean the range of random shift we added to the traces to simulate the desynchronization. We also find that the number of traces for both versions of the AdCAD is not quite enough for our end-to-end -end profiling. So we also conduct data augmentation. Finally, as the figure two, we could reduce the gas entropy to zero with very few traces. Next, we test the desynchronized 8128 dataset. 
For efficient attack, we also conduct a data augmentation. And here are the getting entropy results. Again, you can see that we need only several traces to recover the key. Here are some comparisons to the previous works on the dataset DP context V4.1 and SCAD V1. In the first figure, the blue curve is our result using the raw traces and without knowing the mask, while the previous works using the shortened traces with knowing mask. We can see that although our profiling is conducted on raw traces, the attack is more efficient. In the second figure, the comparison result is similar. Our network trained on raw traces performs much better than the previous work uh, trained on the reduced traces, and the curve of our gas entropy is in the corner. Here is a summary of our attacks. The first column is the data set. The second column is the random delay we used to simulate the desynchronization. And the third column is the number of traces to recover the key. We can see that for most of the cases, we could reduce the guessing entropy to zero in several traces. For some more challenging scenarios, we need tens or even more than a hundred traces. Now we show some visualizations of our network to explain how one of our key structure attention mechanism works. These are the results of a network trained on 8128-N based on the variant 1. From the SNR and the gradients, we could conclude that our network has found out the leakages, and the variation of the attention shows that the attention mechanism decides the time step after the backward RSTM goes through the leakages is very important. So we can see an attention peak in the subfigure C and subfigure D. The network trained on SCAD based on variant 2 could give a more clear intuition of how our attention mechanism focuses on the informative interval. In subfigure F, we plot the probabilities of forward and backward attention. We could observe that both attention instances pay special attention just after RSTMs go through the time steps between about 800 and 900, and these time steps correspond to an interval around index 45,000 on the raw traces. In other words, this interval is suggested by attention mechanism to be the most informative interval on the raw traces. Not surprisingly, this interval includes the 700 time samples that are manually selected by the authors of SCAD. Finally, we delve deeper into the RSTM. We plot the git activation state and try to find out whether the RSTM indeed collects the leakages before the attention asks it to output. The git state is presented by blue curves. We can see the gate is activated just at the position where the peaks of SNRs are located. Therefore, the input gate of RSTM is definitely controlling the RSTM to collect the informative leakages. The relations among the attention probabilities, SNRs, and gate activations indicate that the RSTM and attention mechanism interact as we designed. Finally, we move to the conclusion. In this paper, we introduce a neural network architecture for end-to-end -end profiling. That means rather than leveraging the knowledge of implementations and the value of masks to locate the informative intervals, we could profile the raw traces directly now. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first architecture that achieves end-to-end -end profiling. We also introduced some new structures into the SE field to build the architecture, like the locally connected layers and the attention mechanism. Besides the effectiveness, we find our approach working under the end-to-end -end context performs even better than the networks trained on reduced traces. We also explore how the attention mechanism works in the side-channel context to verify the architecture works as we designed. For the future works, it will be interesting to replace the RSTM to self-attention mechanism to fasten the training process. Since the RSTM cannot be paralyzed, the training is time-consuming now. 
and we will also explore other neural networks or training strategies to improve the performance of deep learning in the SAA. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. And you are welcome to read our paper to get all the details. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you.